Hey guys, I'm back this week with a video catered especially to those of you looking to learn French. I struggled, and when I say struggled, I mean really struggled to get to a point where I just felt comfortable living my life in French. So whether you want to become uber fluent in French or if your goal is just to gain some real key phrases so that you can backpack across France, I want to help you. So let's jump into the important info today. It's the five things you must do when learning French and my surefire tips to help you make it happen. The first thing you guys have to do is be consistent. Learning, consistency, they go together like this. Okay, now I know it's easier said than done and I would much rather be binge watching a Netflix show than learning new verbs. But the thing is, is how can you expect to switch back and forth between English and French like this on a regular basis someday if you can't even put in the time to learn that language on a regular basis? And plus, consistency just helps you get used to learning French, which then you get used to speaking French, and it definitely sticks up here way better, the info, if you're seeing it again and again on a regular basis. So consistency is key. And don't forget, on average, it takes a human two months to learn a new habit and get it in place. So it's not that long before it's going to feel easy. I know it's hard to stay motivated and consistent on your own, but I have the best tip for you. It's Lingoda Language Sprint. So this sprint helps you confidently speak another language, whether it's French, English, German, Spanish, in just three months. And not only that, you can get 100% cash back if you stay consistent. Interested about learning more? Here's how it works. You just need to take an online class once a day for three months. Remember what I said about a new habit? By the time you finish the Lingoda Sprint, it won't even feel like work anymore because one, you'll confidently be speaking French after three months, and two, you'll already have created that new habit we were talking about. It's pretty easy. Now, I love Lingoda not just because of the virtual classes, hello, in my PJs or during my lunch break, but also because the classes are led by native speakers and they're really intimate. On average, there's only three students and there's maximum of five. But I can't lie that the 100% cashback guarantee when you're consistent is the total clincher. It's like my gym membership. I get a euro back every time I go to the gym. Sweet abs plus money back. This is the same thing. Speak French confidently get all my money back, it's kind of like a no-brainer. Consistency is key to learning a language, and this is the type of consistency and motivation you need to make it happen. The sprint is kicking off from April 8, 2020 to July 6, 2020. If you can commit to the super sprint, that's 30 classes a month for three months, you get a 100% refund. If you can commit to the normal sprint, which is 15 classes a month for three months, you get 50% refund. And it's literally for any level. So whether you're the backpacker or you're the one who wants to be uber fluent, this is for you. So mom, I know that you're watching this video because you watch all of my videos and I know you're trying to learn French so that you can talk to your granddaughter in French. So I hope you are the first one to be signing up for this right now. You guys can find the link below so that you can get more information on the language sprint. You can also find a voucher code for 10 euros off of your deposit, which again gets fully refund if you commit to the super sprint. And sign up ends March 24th, so don't forget to sign up before March 24th. Hop to it because there are limited places. The second thing that you have to do is accept the fact that you're going to make mistakes. I know nobody likes to feel like they're sounding stupid, but you're never going to progress if you don't put yourself out there to make some of those mistakes. So my tip for you is try to find the situations where you feel the most comfortable in French and then push yourself to speak French during those times. So for example, I always felt the most comfortable when I was in a bar, I had a nice glass of wine next to me, and I was meeting friends of friends that I didn't know very well and that didn't have great levels of English. It doesn't always have to be wine, so if that's not your thing, it could be when you're at a yoga class, it could be when you're going and picking up bread, when you're going to the grocery store. Um, sometimes if you're shy about speaking French around adults, sometimes speaking with kids can be a little bit easier 
easier. I worked in an English school for, well, a French school speaking English with kids um, for a year, and I actually found that when I would switch to French with the kindergartners, not only did I learn a ton of vocabulary because I could understand what they were talking about, but I also just felt more comfortable talking because what five-year-old cares about your weird accent or if you didn't, you know, um, use a verb correctly. Another thing that helped me was speaking French with other foreigners. I tended to speak with people at a higher level of French than I did. Um, I'm not telling you to go try to speak with another beginner and figure French out together, but I felt more comfortable speaking French in front of my friend's German husband because I knew he had learned French as a second language as well and we were kind of in the same boat than sometimes I did with native French speakers. So that's also a tip. And breath, I mean, if you want to, speak French to yourself in front of the mirror, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're getting ready. Just find those situations where you feel comfortable and accept that you'll make mistakes and get past that and, and get your mouth moving. The third thing is, partner up. Now what do I mean by that? If you've already managed to snag yourself a fabulous Frenchie, then go cuddle up on the couch with them and get corrected. But if your life plan doesn't involve cozying up to a Camille or a Clément, have no fear. It's not just romantically. I mean, partner up with someone else who's learning a new language. We know that self-motivation can sometimes be hard and we know consistency is key. So go see if someone wants to sign up to Lingoda Language Sprint with you or find a friend who wants to take a coffee once a week and swap vocabulary. Even if you don't live in a French speaking country, you'd be surprised how close you might be able to find a French native speaker who would appreciate being able to speak a bit of French in exchange for speaking a bit of English. Get creative and find a partner. My fourth thing is don't overthink it too much. It is a lot when you start learning a new language and you've got new verbs and you've got new conjugations and you've got exceptions to all of the different rules they give you and pronunciation and sometimes it's just very overwhelming. So if you're feeling overwhelmed about the amount of information you learn, my tip to you would be to stop overthinking it and learn some phrases. Sometimes it's great not to just try to piece together little puzzle pieces, but to actually say, okay, what is the phrase for what time is it? Quelle heure est-il? Quelle heure est-il? And you just repeat it over and over. And you don't need to know why do we spell quel with two L's and an E at the end when I've seen it another time with only one L. And why is there this random T in between two dashes? And what does that mean? Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just learn the actual phrase and what that means. And later on, it'll all come together. But don't overwhelm yourself at the beginning if you're having trouble with all of the new information. One of the best tips that I can give you is watching French series to help you with some of those phrases that you're just continually going to hear over and over again. Sometimes it's just easier to hear them rather than read them. I put a list of French series that I like to watch that you can put on with subtitles if you need them. One of the things and tips I would also say is if you decide you're ready to get rid of your subtitles, I would try to start watching shows where you understand the global context and you don't need to catch every single word at the beginning. So for example, I like to watch um, the French Survivor, which is called Colanta, because even if I miss what's going on because there are no subtitles or exactly what that person said to that person, I still get the context of what's going on. and I'm not really frustrated. If we're watching a comedy with no subtitles, I spend like half the time asking my husband like, wait, what? Wait, what? What did I miss? Why is everyone laughing? And that can just get me really frustrated. So my tip is sometimes if you're feeling overwhelmed, make sure that you're thinking about phrases and not questioning too much why you say it that way and watching series as much as you can. This will help. And my final thing is total immersion. Now, I know you can only do total immersion if you're living in a French speaking country. So for those of you who are not or cannot, I'll come right back to you one second. But for those of you that are trying to learn French, living in France, honestly, you need to do your best to stay away from too many of those English speakers. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have English speaking friends. I'm the first one to say you need those for survival. But if 90% of your interactions throughout the day are in English, you're not gonna progress very fast, and then it leads down that dark path of discouragement and disengagement, and we don't wanna go there. If you can, try to get involved in an activity as well. I joined a volleyball team because I like playing volleyball, there's not a lot of talking, but I'm still gonna hear what everyone's saying, and I'm learning a lot of new vocab. It doesn't necessarily just have to be a cafe with someone, you can also go do something with somebody. 
Getting French roommates is also a great way to immerse yourself. Language isn't just about learning how to speak, it's also the culture, and there's no better way of diving in deep to the French culture than living with a Frenchie. If you really want to learn French but you're not in a French-speaking country, have no fear. My husband learned English in Sweden and he spoke it pretty well, so I'm pretty sure that you can learn French in Mexico. The thing is, is just try to immerse yourself as much as you can. So whether that's watching series, listening to French music, changing the settings on your technology so that you've got French on your phone and French on your computer, throwing French-inspired dinners with new vocabulary, teaching your friends French. I mean, you can immerse yourself as much as you can in your own bubble. It won't be easier for you than somebody living in France, that's for sure, but it's not impossible. You just have to give it a fair try. All right guys, I hope you liked this video. I really wanted to give you the five must-haves that are so important to me when learning French, as long with as many tips as I could. Please don't hesitate to leave in the comments below any of the tips that I gave that worked. If you have any tips to share with other people that you found really helpful, that would be amazing too. And otherwise, good luck learning French, and I'll see you guys next week. Bisous.